Venomous bites have made snakes some of our planet's most feared animals, but I bet that you don't know the craziest ones out there. Deep in the rainforests of South America, there is a viper so rare that most people have never even heard of it, the Ecuadorian toadhead. This is one of the continent's deadliest snakes, and today, we're heading out into the jungle to find it. Hunting for a deadly viper in a remote wilderness may not sound like your idea of a good time, but this is the stuff we live for. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers who have learned that all the crazy, dangerous, and bizarre abilities that animals have are actually the keys to their success. And it's our mission to help you become an insider in as many of their stories as we can. See, we're life listers, which means that we keep records of every animal species we find in the wild for fun and for science. And the Ecuadorian toadhead is one of the holy grail snakes that we've always wanted to add to our list. This is not a challenge we can take lightly though, because a single bite from this viper can cause unbearable pain and gruesome muscle damage, possibly leading to amputation or even death. But if this thing is so dangerous, why have you never heard of it before? The reason is that toadheads are incredibly rare, and they only live in dense forests tucked high up in the Andes Mountains of Ecuador, exactly like the cloud forest we're exploring today. The tangled vegetation and steep hills give this camouflaged snake endless opportunities to hide. So we really have our work cut out for us to share this seldom seen viper with you. Luckily, not long after we started searching, we found a sign that we're on the right track, as we came across a venomous snake so uncommon that you are about to see the first footage of this species that has ever been featured on YouTube. Oh, hey, there's a snake right here. Right in the path, okay. Let's see what he is. Wow, look at the belly on this guy. Whoa. This is a ribboned brittle snake. That is a super cool find. Now there's actually not a ton that's known about this species. Their habits and diets haven't been well documented, although there was one recorded case of them eating another snake, so it's possible that this is a reptile specialist. But a lot more study needs to go into these smaller tropical snakes to fully understand their biology. Now one thing we do know is that this species is actually venomous. It's not medically significant, so a bite from him certainly wouldn't kill me, but it can be painful, so I'll just be nice and gentle with them. The other reason we need to be gentle with this guy is, as their name Brittle Snake would suggest, they have the ability to drop their tail, and if we grab him too hard or pinch him, he could release that tail and it won't grow back. So we have to be very, very gentle and just kind of not squeeze him at all. He seems very calm. This is not a super defensive snake. So I think we'll let him get on his way, but this is a great sign already. To see snakes out moving gives us a good indication that there might be some even cooler and maybe rarer snakes further up the trail once we get into some better habitat. So we'll let this guy get on his way, right back where he was in the path. And off he goes. Great find. This brittle snake was all the encouragement we needed to keep up our search, but after that find, it became clear that the cloud forest would not give up any more of its secrets so easily. Rainstorms came out of nowhere and forced everything into hiding, and the only thing that sucked the life out of us more than the humidity were the giant swarms of mosquitoes. We spent hours combing the trails in search of any other reptiles, alongside some expert help I might add. But as hours turned into days and the end of our trip got closer, we were starting to doubt if we would ever find one of these elusive snakes. Your eyes start to play tricks on you after so many days and nights in the forest, and it's hard not to lose focus when every tangle of vines looks like your target. We can't afford to make a mistake though, because at the time of filming there was no anti-venom for this snake's bite available anywhere in the country. With time running out, we decided to hike a promising section of trails that we had scouted the night before. And sure enough, as I rounded a bend, I spotted an iconic coiled shape that made everything worth it. Oh my god, yes. turn the camera on right now. There is a toadhead viper. He is perfect. No way. This is the snake that we came to the cloud forest to find, the Ecuadorian toadhead viper. There was zero guarantee that we would get a chance to spend time with this animal, probably one of the most unique vipers that exists in the cloud forest. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to see if he'll sit here. If he will, we're not even gonna touch him because that is not an animal you wanna get bitten by. But let's 
go! We have a toad head. Ev, you have to take a look at this yep. guy. He's absolutely stunning. The fact that he's sitting in front of us is literally a dream come true. And as is common with a lot of ground dwelling leaf litter specialists, they really don't move a ton. They'll sit perfectly motionless for hours or even days on end. And for that reason, we really have no reason to move this guy as long as he's content to sit there in front of us. Absolutely. We typically like to show a lot of action or adventure in our videos, but this is really the true nature of these snakes. One of their most common behaviors is sitting in ambush position waiting for their prey to come to them. They'll take a wide variety of species. They'll eat small mammals, amphibians, and even other reptiles, including other snakes. But the thing about the toad head is that they're not a particularly fast moving animal, but they are a particularly fast striking animal. So he will sit there in ambush, waiting for prey to come to him, and as soon as something wanders close, he'll reach out, grab them with his massive fangs, and envenomate them with quite a potent cocktail of venom. Their venom has both hemotoxic and myotoxic properties. Hemotoxin targets the blood, and myotoxin targets muscles and tissues, so a bite from this guy would leave some pretty considerable damage. There's only been one recorded case, I think, of an Ecuadorian toadhead biting a human. In that case, there was some intense pain and swelling, which is another reason. You really don't want to move this guy. Taking a bite from this species would not be fun, and it could even potentially be lethal. So giving this guy a respectful distance is incredibly important here. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, this isn't the largest nor the prettiest snake maybe in the entire world, so why the theatrics? Why are we freaking out the way that we are? And I will tell you, this snake is something special. The Ecuadorian toadhead viper has a very limited distribution. There is a tiny sliver of the Pacific Slope of the Andes in which this species exists, and they live nowhere else on Earth. We have to come here to be able to find this animal, and that is one of the reasons that we're so excited to have one in front of us. And in fact, the genus that this snake is in, Bothrocopius, is completely restricted to South America. It's in fact the only genus of vipers that's only found on the South American continent. So it's really an incredible opportunity for us to see this guy at all. Absolutely. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, perhaps. It very well could be. We really don't know when or if we will ever see one of these animals in the wild again. Because because unfortunately, the cloud forests here in Ecuador are under significant threat. As we've been exploring this region, we've seen mile after mile of old growth cloud forest converted for human use. And when that happens, animals like this beautiful viper literally have nowhere else to go. It is really sad to see how much of this habitat has already been exploited for cattle ranching and agriculture and large scale mining operations that just strip the habitat so bare that the wildlife that exists there really can't survive anymore. And like Harrison just said, if these species disappear here, there's no contingency, nowhere for them to go. They would be completely gone from the face of the planet and that would really be a shame. This is one of the most beautiful snakes and one of the most special animals we've ever had the chance to work with. And this just goes to show that even a venomous snake can be completely benign as long as you don't disturb it. If this interaction has gone to show anything, I hope it's demonstrated that if we don't mess with these snakes, they will not mess with us. We're many times their size. It doesn't matter how potent their venom is. If we don't give them a reason to use it, we are not in a position where we are in danger. Absolutely. This is a snake that's worthy of appreciation and a healthy amount of respect, but there's absolutely no reason to fear them. They're not gonna chase people, they don't move super far into human areas. It's only if you were to stumble across them in the wild and go out of your way to mess with them that there could ever be a negative interaction between this snake and a human. But as you're seeing, as we're sitting here with this individual, we're not seeing any defensive displays. He's not opening his mouth, he's not rattling his tail against the ground. He's pretty much content to sit here as long as we're not getting too close that he feels disturbed. Now, on that note, we are gonna get a little bit more footage of this guy because this, as we said, is a very rare opportunity to share this beautiful species with the world, one that you may never have again, we may never have again, so we're gonna relish this moment and then let this beautiful viper get back about its business, but that is pretty special. We did it. I let's... can't believe it. Even sitting in front of it, I can't believe it. All right, let's get out of the way, get some shots, and then he'll be on his way. As we left the toad head to continue his hunt for the day, it really hit me how special of an interaction this was. 
so few people will ever get the chance to share space with this incredible species. These are truly the moments we dream of as life listers and wildlife lovers. It's for that exact reason that we really wanted to share this experience with you. We want more people to respect and appreciate venomous snakes for more than just their infamous defense mechanisms. Because the truth is, that's just a small part of their amazing stories of success in nature. The Ecuadorian toadhead is just like any other animal. Every adaptation they have, even the potentially deadly ones, are just tools that help them survive. And if they weren't the right tools for the job, they wouldn't have them in the first place. It's important to recognize that despite being mere feet from a snake that could have killed us, we were never in actual danger at any point in this interaction, because we didn't antagonize the snake and stayed well out of its strike range. That's exactly what you should do in the presence of any medically significant snake. And with the adventures we have planned, let's just say that we'll have many opportunities to put those tips into practice again very soon. We have a lot more venomous snake content coming with some species that are probably much more familiar to you, and some of them may even be living in your own backyard. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those videos when they come out, but if you want to delve deeper into the fascinating world of the Ecuadorian cloud forest while you wait, check out this video, where we track down some of this region's coolest frogs to add them to our life list. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.